all new MacBook Pro is hot off the presses. Let's get it out of the box and put it through some paces. Hey there friends on YouTube, my name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech, and today we've got this box that needs to be opened. It's got the brand new M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch model. I got the base 512 and eight gigabytes of RAM. Uh, no, eight, yeah, eight gig, but yeah. Okay, eight gigabytes of RAM model. And so uh, we're gonna open it up. I'm gonna do a little benchmarking and we can finally start to see what this thing can do compared to my 15 inch MacBook Pro from early in 2019. So let's start by getting the box open. I like, I like that they have now started to put a little tab here so you don't have to, you don't even have to use a knife to get it open. Look at that. Oh, so nice. Oh. Here we go. We've got the MacBook Pro 13 inch. I think the only time I've ever had a 13 inch MacBook Pro was just briefly before I got an iMac way back in the day. Uh, that was probably like seven or eight years ago. I've always had a MacBook Pro 15 or an iMac or the Mac, the Mac, no, the iMac Pro. This is going to be interesting because on paper and in some benchmarks that we've seen, this guy has, um, uh, how should we say, beat the crap out of just about every other Mac there is, at least in some tests. So we're going to, we're going to look, we're going to see. Here we have the MacBook in all its glory. It looks just like this. I haven't opened a MacBook for a while, so this will be fun. They've got new pull tabs here too. Man, making the unboxing experience just uh, a little less, I, I don't know, makes it too easy. Here we got this, and let's see if we can just drop it out. There it is, the 16 inch, no, the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Let's uh, go ahead and pull it out. What else comes in the box? We have a USB-C to USB-C charging cable. Always nice to have one of those. We've got some stuff in a pouch, envelope, whatever. And we have a charging brick. Charging brick. All this stuff, they, they turn this stuff into paper. So it's no longer like a satisfying plastic peel, but maybe the paper is a satisfying sound too. I don't know, you let me know down in the comments. Is it satisfying to rip open paper as opposed to plastic. Let's see what we've got in the design by Apple in California envelope. There's the MacBook Pro. Oh, two space gray stickers. I don't think I've ever seen the space gray stickers. Are the space gray stickers a thing? I don't think that I've ever seen that. And a quick start guide, then something down deeper in here, I think. It's just something to make the envelope rigid, which it certainly is, but that's not eco-friendly. It doesn't seem to me. That's it for stuff in the box. That leaves us with the MacBook Pro itself. Let's go ahead and, oh, sorry, I, I, I ruined that for you. Let's go ahead and take the mic, point it toward that. That was pretty good, right? Pretty sexy sounding. So. I always get confused with this still to this day. Like here's the Apple logo and it's looking at me, but I have to turn it around this way to open it up. So let's open, I can't open it. All right, there we go. Ooh, the bong. And it just starts right up. Take off this. Take off the papery thing and it's starting. Ooh, it's done starting. Man, this is picking up a lot more Wi-Fi than usually gets picked up. Does anybody read these terms and conditions ever? I don't. I just click. I just click and then I let it go. I, I, it's, oh, it's nice to see you. I'm not a big fan of the touch bar. If you, if you like the touch bar, let me know down in the comments below. Let me know why, because I've found that the touch bar is just kind of like useless. Dark mode is maybe the best feature. <laughs> Apple Music has always been one of the pain in the rear end programs, but 
There it goes. Uh, let's try Apple TV. Again, pretty fast. Wow. I just can't get over that. I cannot get over that. I'm going to have to spend a couple of days and put this thing through its paces and see what it can do. But again, this is the 512 gigabyte hard drive, SSD, whatever you want, and eight gigabytes of RAM. And again, those benchmarks are crazy because compared to my 15 inch MacBook Pro from early 2019, this... I'm impressed with this initial just launching the Apple programs that are that are in here already. Uh, and once I get my other applications downloaded and in, I'll do a little test on how fast those boot up. But in the meantime, uh, suffice it to say that it's quite possible that this MacBook Pro 13 inch with eight gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage could possibly Replace my 50 inch MacBook Pro. <laughs> okay, so this is the camera. Apple said that they had done all kinds of things with image processing and all that kind of stuff, but this is not good. 720p. I have a studio light like on me, and it's just, it's grainy, it's gross. I mean, I know this is a dark room, but still, studio light is on me over here plenty of lights on other, otherwise in the space, not good. Here's what I'm gonna do for the rest of the video. I'm gonna go through my overall conclusions of using this thing for the first day or so. Using it, I'm gonna edit this video with this machine to see how well it works in Final Cut Pro. Uh, I've got it, all my stuff that I usually use plugged in and you know, other than trying to get my audio interface to hook up immediately, I had they just had to talk to each other. I guess they had, I don't know. But it's working now. So this is the microphone. This is the camera. Uh, yeah. But now on to the conclusion. Let's wrap this up with a few thoughts about what we have discovered here. Uh, the MacBook Pro at its baseline has been a pretty darn impressive machine so far. Of course, I don't have it totally set up. I don't have all of my stuff going on. But doing the editing, doing the recording of this last part, once everything got set up, everything was working well. There are some unfortunate hiccups. Uh, I usually use Universal Audio Interface, and unfortunately it is not yet uh, supported in Big Sur or on the Silicon M1 chips. So I can't use that, I'm using my Tascam Model 12. Everything is going off without a hitch. The benchmarks are showing us that this machine can compete with just about anything out there and punch well above its weight class, which I don't think I, I don't think that a lot of us have still wrapped our mind around. Um, you know, some people have been showing benchmarks of gaming frames, frame rates, and such, and showing awful numbers like. The point of these machines, they're not gaming machines. So that's not really a knock against it. Where this machine needs to shine is in everyday use. And so far it does that. And in the kind of work that people who use Macs need to be able to do. For those of us who do video editing or audio recording or anything like that. I mean, not all of us are doing incredible 4K, blah -de blah all that kind of stuff all the time, nor are most YouTube projects like I do 
all that really intensive in terms of other stuff that gets thrown into the video. My overall take after putting this MacBook Pro 13 through some paces and getting a sense of what it's capable of is that A, this thing is stupid fast. It's just stupid fast. It's super quiet. I ran Cinebench and that test took more than 10, maybe 12, closer to 15 minutes. And I put my ear down to the machine and whatever fan is in there is either dead silent or, or it's not turning on. <laughs> so that's amazing. And you know, the touch bar has always, the touch bar area has always been a problem in in Intel based Macs because it just gets super hot there. That's where the chip and the CPU and all the heat pipes and all that kind of stuff are. And so whenever you would touch the touch bar, it would be almost uncomfortably warm to the touch. But this one, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's cold. It's cool when you touch the touch bar after using this thing to do a bunch of benchmarks and everything else that I just finished. So no heat, which is incredible. You're not gonna cook your thighs or your testicles or anything else anymore. Uh, so it's amazing. And it's powerful enough, again, to do everything that I need it to do on a day-to-day -day basis. If that changes after I work with it for a while, then I'll come back with another video and let you know. But it is powerful enough based on the experience that I've had editing a video and doing a little bit of stuff in Logic and all that kind of thing to do more than everything that I need it to do. And you could not do that with a base model 13-inch MacBook Pro ever before. Here's how I think about it. Everybody's thinking about, oh, well, if you're a pro, wait till the next one comes out. Think about it this way. If you are a professional and you don't need, you know, the super fastest, most powerful graphics card, you know, decked out machine, this will do everything that you need it to. This machine cost me $14.99. I'm trading in my MacBook Pro 15 inch and they're giving me $1,300 for it. So this is a $200 computer other than eight gigabytes of ram versus 16 i'm not losing anything but i'm gaining a ton of performance over that machine so if you are a professional money is obviously always going to be very tight and you want to you want to maximize your ability to profit so buying a machine that's half as expensive as the one that you're replacing it with i mean that was a 2800 macbook when i bought it the 15 inch from early 2019 it this is $14.99. So half the price, give or take $100 for better performance in the things that you do most often. Why would you consider spending more? If you're never gonna, you know, compile huge amounts of code or you're never gonna do giant CAD rendering or anything like that, if you're never gonna do this stuff that really takes super heavy lifting power, then this machine is worth considering. I got the Mac Mini coming on Friday and I'm anxious to see what that's able to do. I've been watching the coverage of this and a lot of people are saying, wait until the next one, wait until the next one. I don't see why you would need to wait until the next one if this one will do everything that you needed to. Yes, there are two fewer Thunderbolt 3 ports and it works for me because I have a CalDigit Thunderbolt 3 uh, dock that has like a, an insane amount of things plugged into it but I have just one cable plugged into my MacBook Pro 13 and it's running everything that I have both for my YouTube setup as well as my audio setup. So this is a huge deal. Let me say that again. This is a huge deal because you've never been able to get more power for half the price. And now you can. And yes, we could pick it apart and talk about its gaming performance or whatever, but that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. These are not gaming machines. Macs have never been gaming machines. And now it's just better at what it does best for less money. Ah, yes, I'm excited for what comes next, but this, we need to stop and take a moment and just be like, oh, okay, that's why it matters not because it's a small thing that can do things faster. It's a small, cheaper thing compared to what we had to have before. And that's what really matters. So 
I'm very excited to continue to use this through the next couple of weeks and see. I'm excited to compare it to the Mac Mini that I've got coming that has a terabyte of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM in there or memory or whatever you want to call it. I'm, I'm really excited about this. And anybody out there who's like poo, 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 look at the benchmarks. Uh, look at the benchmarks and see what this machine is competing with. The Cinebench single core score, this thing was number two. <laughs> and everything else below it was, you know, like a, Z a core Xeon this, that, the other. I mean, some really powerful chips were below this machine. And that to me is amazing, the multi-core score you know, where it sits right in the middle of all of these machines that cost thousands of dollars more than this machine. Incredible. So let me know what you think down in the comments and we'll discuss. This will change the game in computing overall, period. Being able to get this kind of performance for this kind of price for this low spec of a model is just it's going to change everything. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. We'll discuss, you know, there's like 30% of the people who watch the, these videos are subscribers. And I think that's low. So let's get that number up. If you thought you were subscribed and maybe you're not, or if you meant to subscribe, but maybe you didn't, or if you have all just come here for the first time, you know, no judgment. Just go ahead and hit that subscribe button and, uh, and we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Uh, we get that number up and if you're interested in becoming a member of the painfully honest tech channel and getting the benefits of that Then there's a link down there with a join button And then we also have a bunch of merch that you can get a hold of anyway once again. Thanks so much for being here I really do appreciate it. My name is Jason sometimes known as the JTL. This is painfully honest tech tech so honest it hurts Sick. Sick. Until the next time I'm out